What is up you guys? Welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, just welcome. My name is Gemma Jade, but today we are going to be discussing claims of malicious extraterrestrial civilizations in our very own Milky Way. Now, when I saw this, I was like, oh my gosh, I have got to cover this immediately. And I sat right down and started writing the script. And then I was like, oh my gosh, this is a lot of science. So bear with me on that. Um, that's my disclaimer. A lot of science. We discuss a lot of topics regarding and surrounding extraterrestrials on this channel. I like to cover a wide variety of topics and generally try to bring things to you that you haven't heard a million and one times before. When I search for topics for my content on this channel, it's important to me that I only present things that at least seem logical and reasonable, even if there are no facts and evidence to back them up. That's not what I prefer. I prefer to have facts, evidence, documented sources, but in this community and with these topics, it's really hard. That's what's happening in this video, kind of, because there's an astronomer who is claiming that he knows for a fact there are at least four malicious and malevolent extraterrestrial civilizations who live right here in our own Milky Way. This, at least to me, translated to close enough to reach us when they want to and evil enough to attack and or possibly enslave us if they wanted to. Let's jump right in, shall we? When we think about movies or TV shows that feature friendly extraterrestrials, there are maybe a handful and most likely less that we can probably come up with off the top of our head. Steven Spielberg's movie E.T. and maybe ALF. Do you guys remember ALF or am I showing my age? Otherwise, regardless of the type or species of the alien being, it's usually attacking our planet and or trying to take it and us over. Another grand theme that seems to be almost becoming ordinary is them killing us off. The Predator movie, Independence Day with Will Smith, there are shapeshifters, body snatchers, and even when you think of the often beloved, sometimes loathed, Star Trek, there are Klingons and things are not all chill with them. Like the Klingons, they're not chill. There are all kinds of examples I can use here to show that, at least in Hollywood, extraterrestrials are not really fairly portrayed. I say this not because I'm ignorant to the fact that the Glimmer Man or Predator entity, the exact one from the movie, somehow, somehow they got that right, is real, but because I'm looking at the data and the research. Usually abductions are examinations of some sort. I am in no way saying they aren't traumatizing or terrifying or life altering. I'm simply saying there isn't a single report as best as I could find of any type of alien species blasting down buildings or sucking out our souls from us. Okay, okay, so you guys got me. The reptilians, right? The shape-shifting, the reptilians with the shape-shifting, but other than that, and for the most part, the majority of reports are benign. I always ask if they were wanting to enslave us or take over our planet for whatever reason, then why haven't they done it yet? They are clearly capable and millennia ahead of us in technology. Most likely weaponry too, so why would they be waiting for us to catch up? It doesn't make sense to me that they would be waiting for us to become much more advanced in those things so we can give them a fair fight. But with the good always comes the bad, and that goes for every single species on this planet and seemingly out there too. Perhaps it's foolish to believe that there aren't evil and malevolent, violent extraterrestrial entities out there because it's almost certain, like, like 99.999, maybe even 100% positive that they are somehow, meaning extraterrestrials, are somehow genetically connected to or at least very similar to us and we, meaning human beings, are violent, destructive, and absolutely terrible to one another. NASA has been, for who knows how long, trying to broadcast messages to stars they are almost certain have intelligent life living on them. There are a lot of people who find this fact very concerning on so many levels, but mainly what are the odds these entities and civilizations that are or could be inhabiting these planets are kindly, friendly, and benevolent? I mean, every single one of them out there is, is kind and friendly. That's like playing Russian roulette with five bullets and a six shooter, in my opinion. This all really scared me when I heard about it. And that's another reason I wanted to bring it to you guys. Remember though, I am new to all of this and I'm only recently beginning to research anything having to do with ETs. I won't go into that because I go into it a lot in my other videos. If these life forms are malicious, we are basically telling them right where we are by doing this, by sending out these signals. But <laughs> I digress as always. Let's talk about the study and the data. 
a PhD student in conflict resolution at the University of Vigo in Spain named Alberto Caballero, who also authored a book called Estimating the Prevalence of Malicious Extraterrestrial Civilizations, is a man who is pretty well learned and knowledgeable when it comes to communicating with aliens, or at least trying to, and he says that the most likely star to have intelligent extraterrestrial life on it is the one that sent that wow signal back in 1977 and which is now basically infamous in this community again i'm new to this community and i wasn't born in 77 so maybe we'll talk about the wow signal let me know in the comments if you want more about this he recently wrote a paper where he explained that that particular signal led him to search for stars near us that are similar to our sun with exoplanets that have the potential to be colonized ones that are inhabitable basically he said this search led him to 2 mass 1928-1982-2640123, which is identical to our sun. Alberto is searching specifically for malevolent extraterrestrial life and therefore says he wasn't led into his search by the data. He stated, quote, the estimation is based on the world's history of invasions in the last century, the military capabilities of the countries involved, and the global gro growth rate of energy consumption, end quote. He also said, quote, the findings could serve as a starting point for an international debate about sending the first serious interstellar radio messages to nearby potentially inhabitable planets, end quote. In order to try to understand this, it starts with the assumption that if there is intelligent life in extraterrestrial civilizations, that they would be human life, but much more technologically and logistically advanced and therefore capable of nearby interstellar travel, which we're not. He compiled a list of country-to-country -country invasions on our planet between the years 1915 and 2022, this year, and he found 51 examples which included World War I and World War II. This seems relatively small when you think about the fact that we have 191 official countries on our planet. So there are more, but officially recognized as countries, 191. The ability for the nearby interstellar travel is called type 1, and that means it's a quote-unquote type 1 on something called the Kardashev scale. I'm trying to break this down in the most simplest terms I possibly can for you guys because I am already extremely confused, like when I was writing this, and I don't want you guys to be too. And then again, I'm sometimes easily confused when it comes to science and mathematics. Caballero took the Italian astronomer and SETI scientist Claudio Macon's estimation to determine the number of exoplanets in our Milky Way that could possibly host a type 1 civilization and determined that there are 15,785 possibilities. Based on our own, like humanity's predisposition to invade, meaning humanity's propensity, how many of these civilizations NASA is possibly trying to or already communicating with or just in general are malevolent and ready, willing and evil to attack us? Like, are they inviting them? Alberto said this, quote, 0.22 type 1 civilizations capable of nearby interstellar travel and 4.42 civilizations if all of them were like humanity. We aren't even a type 0 yet, by the way, FYI. I don't mention the 4.42 civilizations in my paper because one, we don't know whether all the civilizations in the galaxy are like us below type zero, and two, a civilization like us would probably not pose a threat to another one since we don't have the technology to travel to their planet. We'll reach that technology once we become type one, end quote. So basically he is saying there are approximately four, exactly 4.42, question mark, question mark, malicious extraterrestrial civilizations right here in our own backyard our very own Milky Way. I mean, technically and generally, this shouldn't concern or worry us too much because by now we all know there are probably an infinite number of planets with life on them in the galaxy and throughout the universe and what I like to call the multiverse because in my opinion, that's more than likely the case of what we are dealing with here. But moving on, moving on, that's for another video. They would need to know we exist first though, right? What are the odds they would even choose us or our planet to take over or kill or enslave or whatever else they could possibly do? Like, why would they choose us? Because NASA and whoever else is reaching out to them. Caballero estimates that an invasion or takeover from one of these civilizations, provided they receive one of NASA or whoever else's signals and determine where we are and that we are basically Neanderthal in regards to our tech compared to theirs, and would make possibly the easiest prey out of everyone in the dimension, that it would be equivalent to when the dinosaurs were hit by that asteroid and wiped out, meaning the end of life as we know it on this planet, the end of our race here altogether. 
I'm kind of hesitant or was kind of hesitant to say that like the end of the human race because I believe in an infinite number of realms and dimensions and this would only be happening in this one and therefore we would be screwed we would but humanity itself would technically live on not to mention other planets where humans live of this I am convinced but anyways I'm moving on because once again and for the third time whole other video no worries it's coming this man says that to get the type of response like that, like this invasion that wipes us out like the dinosaurs before us, we would only have to send 18 interstellar messages to planets capable of interstellar travel. That's not a lot, guys, if you really think about it and in the grand scheme of things. In order to simply generate some sort of contact or perhaps a less murderous invasion, we would have to send 18,000 messages to all different habitable planets. So are we doomed to this fate, to the fate of the dinosaurs? There's one more variable Alberto says we should consider, and that's energy consumption. It seems as our consumption of energy goes up, our invading of each other, country to country, actually goes down. He noted that in the last 50 years or so, while world energy consumption has drastically increased, the invasions, as I just stated, have decreased really pretty dramatically. They haven't stopped altogether, mind you, and as we all, especially right now, are well aware of. If we want to reach type 1 and be capable of interstellar travel, our consumption of energy would have to be absolutely massive. This actually bodes well for us, as according to Carabello's theory here anyways, because that type of consumption would or should drastically reduce the chances of any type of ET invasion. So as we consume that massive mega amount of energy to be able to travel interstellarly that actually you know again makes our chances a lot lower because they're probably going to see how how much energy we're using maybe uh, this one was mind-blowing guys but I, I had to bring it to you because I know a lot of you are going to know what I'm talking about he tries to put it in terms the average person can understand by saying, quote, we could send up to 18,000 interstellar messages to different exoplanets and the probability of invasion by a malicious civilization would be the same as that of an Earth collision with a global catastrophe asteroid, end quote. Put this way, with the energy consumption stuff aside, we are totally and completely screwed in my humble opinion. Before I go, because my head is spinning and I'm still trying to understand and relay all of it to you guys, Let's just talk a little bit about 2MASS 1921982-2640123, just for fun and to maybe lighten the mood since it looks like we're all doomed. Just a couple of few interesting facts. I love astronomy, so here it goes. It's the most likely source of that wow signal back in 1977. Again, let me know if you want me to cover that. It is 1800 light years away and sits in the Sagittarius constellation. It has the same temperature, radiance, and luminosity as our sun and is the exact, exact identical twin of it. As I sit here and go over these facts and put two and two together to try and make it equal for, I wonder what the hell kind of being could even live in or on the sun? Like, what? That's all I have for you today, guys. Please like this video, give it a big thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and spread the love by sharing this video with some friends. If you haven't gone over to my other channel, Moon Bear Oracle, right here on YouTube, please go on over and do that and subscribe. I'd really, really appreciate it. It's an up and coming channel, not too much going on. Gemma Jade merch, the link will be in the description box, and some info on the manifestation and intention, homemade, handcrafted, charmed sprays and mists that I'm making. I'm super excited about those. Um, I'm hoping to get a website out soon, but right now it's just kind of word of mouth. If you're on my Facebook, the pinned comment on my Facebook is all about them. All right. In the continental US, 1895 includes shipping. Okay. So check out the deets on that. If you would like to make a donation to this channel, consider joining my Patreon for some fun perks and bonuses. I'm really trying to step up my Patreon game. Also, my PayPal and Cash App links will be in the description box and my Amazon wish list gift link. Things I want to help the channels progress, mainly Moon Bear Oracle, like Oracle decks, um, all kinds of crystals and just a whole bunch of stuff on there if you want to send me a gift, aren't able to donate for whatever reason. Donations are very, very much appreciated because that is how I get paid right now. Um, YouTube ads with the size of my channel, meh. All right, moving on. If you'd like to purchase my book, Missing the Faith Theory by Gemma Jade, I will leave a link to the paperback and Kindle version of it on Amazon. If you would like a signed copy, please email me before making the purchase. If you have any encounters with the extraterrestrial, supernatural, paranormal, otherworldly, 
crazy, crazy, scary, scary, please email them to me at gemmajadeparanormal at gmail.com and I will put them in my listener encounter series. I have enough for 16. I'm going to try to film it in the next two weeks. Thank you so much to everyone who submitted 1 through 15 and now 16. On Wednesday nights, right here on this channel from 7.15 to 11.15 p.m. Eastern Time, it's me and Ghost Dragon ZW. Come on in to the stream. It's like four, four and a half hours. I pull one random oracle card from a random deck and I have a little bit over 70 now. And I use that card and I give you a weekly reading. I do it for free. $5 recommended donation, but you don't have to donate. It's all in good fun. Come in and hang out. Get a weekly reading. Tuesday nights live from another dimension. It's myself and Ghost Dragons from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time. And we're really just hanging out just like the old campfire stories that Steve Stockton and I used to do but now it's me and Ghost Dragons and it's Tuesday night these are Eastern times if you would like a personal intuitive oracle reading for me 7 to 15 possibly more cards please email me at moonbearoracle at gmail.com guys be kind to each other be kind to yourselves and never accept anything less than others being kind to you always go in grace smile at a stranger thank you so 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 much for coming back for supporting me please check out my manifestation intention inspiration sprays i put so much love and work into them and i tried to make it a really great deal for you guys so more coming on that like i said and um i love you and i'll see you next time bye